Hello there, viewers. So, a couple of weeks ago, I promised an interview with Tom Fryer and Cam Khan of the Phoenix Academy. This happened, and it went very well, apart from the fact that there were sound issues. Completely and utterly my fault. Sorry to Tom and Cam, but we have to re-record it. However, in the meantime, we had a very special visitor come to Hawley here to look at our All Stars program, our Dynamos program, but most importantly to him, uh, our disability cricket program because he is Richard Hill MBE who is the disabilities uh, competition manager and I was very fortunate to sit down and have a little interview with him and this is the result welcome to Behind the Boundary Whoa. Richard, thanks ever so much for coming down. No problem. Uh, in the first place, and uh, I'm and to uh, observe what we're doing. Uh, just to let the viewers know, we have uh, the Dynamos in the background and the All Stars just behind me, all doing their Friday workouts and uh, learning the game of cricket. Um, so. Firstly, I have to ask you about the Phoenix. Uh, what do you think about a new team that's starting? I, I, I think it's fantastic. I, I was saying to Gary earlier that it's just great to see actually so many youngsters here. I think I think the All Stars and the Dynamos um, uh, schemes I think I think are fantastic to, to draw youngsters in. Look, just looking at the the All Stars group themselves, there's they're just having great fun. Mm. You no, know, they're just young, youngsters just having fun. There's lots of laughter. There's lots of lots of screaming and shouting, which is brilliant, and and very little, li very little of it is actually about cricket at this stage, which is which is also really good, uh, and it's just great to see to see them just playing together. The same the same I think with the Dynamos, with the slightly older group again, probably a little bit more structured in in, in that respect, and 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 over the far side to see a group of young girls playing who. Uh, Stuart tells me have been coming since 2017. It's, it's just unbelievable. Uh, it's it's yeah. great. Uh, initially, with the Dynamo schemes and All Stars, what 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 was what did you hope w would be the goal? Well, I think I think it's about it's about bringing youngsters into the game, and I think it's it's really well documented that in any sport or physical activity, um, if you haven't drawn children in by the age of 11 into a physical activity, it's very very difficult to, to get them after that age. And again, it is you know about about that coordination of bat and ball, and hopefully from that, you know, as they as they grow older, you know, cricket will be fun. They'll see. The first thing you want them to say is it's fun, and and all around the country, you know, the the, the numbers of children signing up for, for for these two schemes is phenomenal, and and I think from from my point of view, my my particular flavour of cricket is based around disability. The fact that these kits now, these kit bags are now have adaptive equipment in there, allows children with with any sort of impairment to also join in as well. So for me, that's that, that's music to my ears, to be honest. Do you feel that uh, clubs in general should should adapt to be more inclusive? Is that the way forward for cricket these days? I think, uh, if I'm honest, I mean, I, I've been involved in, in disability cricket for mm -hmm. um, 25 years or so. And, and where we are now from where we were then is, is, is a quantum leap mm -hmm. in, in, ter in, terms of, um, in terms of participation. Other sports certainly are doing inclusive stuff, and I think here actually, um, I was saying to Gary earlier that this is almost the, the the true definition of inclusion because we have this going on, and shortly there'll be some children with visual impairment here as well mm -hmm. who are also part of the same club, albeit their their exercises in their station is slightly different because it needs to be adapted, but they're still part of this whole thing. That that's a true definition of inclusion for me. It's not it's not necessarily about that one child that's that's working with other sort of non-disabled children whilst that is inclusive having having this is also inclusive as well so um, and, and I guess you know we we are starting to see some small shoots of inclusion around the country um, I've, I've been approached a couple of times from various leagues around the country talking about players who are wheelchair users can they play league cricket of, of course they can and and we need to just make some adjustments to, for that to happen so Small bits, but hey, you know, when I played cricket a thousand years ago, there was mm. none of that. So, so the fact that we're, we're where we are is, is a good place. But I just think we kind of need to be aware. And, and as interestingly, so, some a couple of years ago, the, the guy who heads up coach education was asked about how, how do you coach disabled people, and he went, Well, coaching is coaching. Yeah. And, and, and I kind of agree with that coaching is coaching, 
but we just have to adapt sometimes. But we have to adapt with everybody, whether they're disabled or not. One of my current projects is around creating resource, around awareness. We would put coaches in front of cameras and talk about scenarios. And that would then be shared with, with everybody that may come across something similar. So ra rather than, you know, saying that, you know, you've got somebody who's, a, who's a, a, an above arm amputee and you should do A, B and C because of that. Well, everybody's different, you know, yeah. so we're trying to normalise disability in, in some respects. It will take a while. Are you hoping that, I guess, like the uh, Paralympics, that uh, there'll be different categories of uh, cricket? Well, actually, um, we actually do that now. We, we, we classify players now across all impairments. So so at, at performance level, we you rightly say we have an England deaf team. We also have an England blind team, an England physical disability team, and an England learning disability team. Right. All of those teams have to go through a level of classification um, to be eligible, um, and they're, they're all slightly different systems. Um, so, so the guys who are deaf and the guys who are blind, there's an international standard that they have to that they have to meet, and we we uh, we have processes in place to, to to ensure that those players meet those those standards. Same, same with learning disability, we, we have a kind of a two-tier system for learning disability because um, at, at our county game we allow, um, at, at our, our levels of um, eligibility are less stringent mm -hmm. so, and that's based around we want more people to play. But if they, need to play, if they want to play at international level then there's quite, there's quite a stringent process but we at ECB uh, manage that as well through an independent um, assessor. So we, we do that. Physical disability um, we introduced uh, physical disability classification to our county game 12 years or so ago. So all of our players in our, in our England side have, gone, have undergone that. It's an independent system, we would do an assessment, and then they would assign them one of 32 different physical disability categories. <laughs> so, 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 and we do that, and we do that in our county competition as well. Ours is around trying to create a level playing field, it's around trying to make the games as competitive as possible but at the same time, they need to be fun. In our, in our uh, domestic game, in our county competition, uh, this year, for the first year, we, we have, we've mixed physical disability, learning disability, and deaf players all in the same team. Uh, we believe, well, certainly in cricket, we, we're the only team sport in the world that does this. Um, I know other team sports, um, sorry, in terms of cricket, that is, I think other team sports do it. I've, I've heard of stuff in Australia. But, um, We've always had physical disability and learning disability together because uh, it certainly helped with numbers in the early days, but we do find that they complement each other quite well. And this year we've allowed deaf players to come into our competition. What it has done is increased the standard of playing that competition. Um, a lot of the deaf players that have come in play mainstream cricket on a Saturday, so it's kind of just, just raised the level and it's helped those other, other players in the other um, impairment groups to just raise their game as well, which is which is what they're after. How did you originally get into cricket? What gave you this uh, passion to? Uh, um... I I've been in, I'm I'm 62 now, and I've been in cricket now for 50 years. So so as a player, that is, I, I don't play anymore. But certainly, I played my first game when I was 12. There, there weren't any Colts really where, uh, at, at that time and I, I, I played in my village team because they were short. So my, my very first game, in my, my dad played, he kept wicket and my very first game, I can remember it to this day where my dad had died for a catch uh, 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 in, in, uh, behind the stumps, ball had deflected off of his glove and I caught it at first slip. Remember that as plain as anything. I'm not and sure. You were I've, hooked. And I, yeah, and I'm not sure I've caught anything since. To be fair, but, um, and I've been in and around cricket all my life, mm. and and not not. I, I was never particularly. I was bang average. Probably not even that really. But but it's something that's just it's just a passion that's just grown and grown. And and you know I was able to play sort of sort of village cricket for thirty odd years, and um, ha having always had a disability, I was able to. I was reasonably mobile. Uh, however, they used to stick me in the slips because I wasn't particularly quick in the field. But that was fine, and I, I was kind of happy with that. But uh, as as my mobility and my age got on, and I lost my, my mobility, um, I kind of I was one of those that retired about four or five times over about six or seven years. You know, and kept on being. Yeah, yeah, and, that, yeah. That, that's right. And then, and then somebody, somebody said to me, um, 
who was a cricket coach, said, have you ever thought about disability cricket? And I thought, my first thought was, oh, you see me bat or something? <laughs> so, <laughs> not even, not, I've not, never even heard of it at that stage. And, I, and they said, look, there's, there's, there's what they called home internationals going on at, at Lord's um, once a year. He said, I'll, I'll give you a ring when it happens. I never thought any more of it. But true to his word, this man phoned me up about six months later, said, they're doing them next week, did you fancy coming? So I went over to Lord's. And quite literally, it was just one of the most profound moments in my life. Mm -hmm. It's just bizarre. I walked into the indoor school at Lord's there, and there was just a whole load of people with disabilities that were just playing cricket in the indoor school. And it was one of those moments where everybody, I just kind of, you kind of got it. Everybody in there just got it. Nobody ever spoke about their disability, they only ever spoke about cricket, but everybody in there understood everybody. It was just the most bizarre thing to, to even describe. And, and I, I just thought, this is fantastic, I, I need to get a bit of this. So, so, so here we are, 25, 30 years later, um, and I, I ran the Disability Cricket Programme in Hertfordshire for about 15 years. At its height, we were working with 1,200 disabled people a month mm -hmm. there across all sorts of, across all sorts of areas. I, I then, I kind of, I ran, I started and ran the Hertfordshire Disability Team, which I, which I still run. Um, and I got involved in a, a voluntary organisation that ran, ran the, the, the county league at the time. And at the time there were eight, eight teams in there. So, um, and, and, and again, it was mi mixed disability and, and that was great for me, it was just brilliant. I found myself travelling all over the country just to go to meetings and things and just, just to satisfy the, my need to just keep involved keep being involved. Well, here I am now, sort of fully employed by the ECB. My, my, my title at the moment is, is competitions manager. Um, I, I've managed that, that county competition for um, probably about 10 years, maybe a, maybe a few more. On those days when there was eight teams, th this year we have 44 teams in it, so it's grown, it's grown massively. It will continue to grow. Uh, and my role with that is, is to make sure that the competition is robust enough to, 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 to allow for expansion. I've also been fortunate enough to, to work with all of the England teams and, and you know, go to exotic places with them and, and what have you. And it's, and, it, and it's just been brilliant. And, and, and even now, you know, I, I, I still say, you know, at 62 years old, I'm more enthusiastic now about cricket than I've ever been, really. It's just, it's just something that I can't see me ever doing anything else. You know, I, can't, I, I don't even think about retiring. You know, coming down here on, on, on a Friday night is just, I think Barry said about it, most people may look and think, oh, Friday night, I'm, I'm all over this. You know, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, the nice thing about uh, what we seem to have set up here, the, the group that we have, is that it really does feel like a family, yes. which actually makes it an appealing thing yes. to come down. Yeah, it absolutely nights. does. And it's interesting you say that, because you know you, you, you only get one chance at the first impression, don't you? Mm. And just coming down here, the atmosphere around here is really lovely. It's really lovely. It's just, you. <laughs> it, no, it absolutely is. And I'm not just saying that because it's the right thing to say. It, it genuinely is. You know, you can just feel that people are really enjoying themselves. They've got the guys that are doing the coaching are, you know, are so enthusiastic about it. And, and parents too. And well, it's we've just, got it's our young, uh, um, over doing the dynamos, yeah, our young yeah, academy the, yeah, uh, the players, oh, okay. the 16 year olds. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 but even having that, you know, having those young people coming up to, to teach their ways to, to other younger people is fantastic, isn't it? It just, it really is. It's, you know, a lot of clubs could learn an awful lot from this. It's, it's just brilliant. So who are your heroes? I think, uh, for, for me, if, if you tell me to who, who, who's the, my, my sort of favourite cricket trover, I'd probably have to go with David Gower. Uh, I'm a left-handed bat. Well, I was a left-handed batsman right. when I could bat, and he was the most elegant batsman yes, that, that I've really ever seen. Was. Really, and, oh, and cool. um, I was fortunate enough last year to, to meet him at a Taverners thing, and he was everything I was expecting him to be. To be honest, he was he was Gentleman. really lovely. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I just think and does things outside of cricket as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, very, very much so. So, so de definitely him. He's right up there, but. But also people like, uh, you know, having sort of seen both them and, and Viv Richards play and Joel Garner and all those, those West Indians. Joel Garner, I always think, is one of the more underrated yeah, uh, no, West Indian bowlers. Yeah, absolutely. He's absolutely. the one that everyone forgets about. Yes. Not Malcolm Marshall, yes. but uh, Gertley Ambrose. Yeah. 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 And you're right, it's amazing how they do forget about considering how big he is. Yes. He's <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a huge man. But I think the first cricketer that I can actually remember seeing live and I must have seen all 22, obviously, on the day, but the one that sticks in my mind was Imran Khan. I right. remember watching Imran Khan bowling for Sussex against Middlesex at Lords. My dad must have taken me up there and 
we were sideways on and Imran Khan was running in and bowling and, and you literally, it was, a, it, was a, it was a dry, hot day and all you could see was a puff of dust where the ball had pitched and uh, into the wicketkeeper's gloves and I just thought, wow. But yeah, I think I think David Gower uh, out out of all of those well, out of all of those guys is the one that I would say is just it's just his elegance really. It just seems everything seems to be effortless, effortless. That's what, yeah, that's thing. that's what I got from watching him as well. That yeah. you, you you see so many batsmen who've got complete and utter focus, but he always looks so calm at yes. the crease and just yes. uh, yeah played with and, a and, and the difference. One of the one of the many differences between your average cricketer and somebody like him and somebody like Jeff Bridges is they just find time. They just, yeah. they just yeah, it's almost like time. the the ball is coming to them at half the speed Absolutely. that it really is. How, how do they do that? I, my, my younger brother, who's seven years younger than me, used to play cricket at Neville Park, where they used to have the concerts. That, and Somerset brought a team up there, a, a connection, and it was Viv Richards' um, benefit year. My, my brother was about 14 or 15 at the time. And he bowled Viv Richards in this, in this, this game, got him out for north. And um, which didn't go particularly down well with everybody. That <laughs> seen him. The following year, he also got him out, but he caught him on the boundary after he'd scored a load of runs. But the interesting thing about this story isn't so much that. It was about 20 years later. My brother was a musician um, in the Royal Artillery, and he was he'd come back. He was coming back from America after some concert thing they'd done, and he caught just a civilian uh, flight. And he's on. He, he, he said, "I got up onto the plane, walking up the island. Jeff Richards was on there." He said, and I looked at him, and the Viv Richards went, Nepal's Park. And I went, he did not. He said, seriously, he did. I said, that man has seen so many people in his life, why would he remember you? He said, because I was that snotty 14-year-old that got him out. Yes. <laughs> I said, oh, he's had that vendetta on you for years, mate. I've watched it. So. <laughs> Richard, thanks ever so much for coming. No, you're more than welcome. Oh, that's so kind. Cool. Uh, uh, if you like signs, sign it all Thank you very much. Can I um, just say to these guys earlier, um, the, the, the scheme to go for All Stars and, and for Dynamos is fantastic and it's so, so great to see so many children here and parents here and it's the lifeblood of, of, of cricket. And what's particularly nice is, is also the guys with visual impairment are included in this as well. For me, that's kind of, we've been working for this for 25 years, so it's fantastic to see it. So thank you all very much. And I really did tell you this, it's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thanks ever so much to Richard Hill for coming down. Um, it was so lovely sitting down and chatting to him. I found it absolutely fascinating. And to me, it really hit home as to how important it is that we have this disability program here at the Frimley Phoenix. Uh, and so thank you, viewer, for uh, watching. And please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next instalment. In the meantime, I'm going to go and join the final hours of uh, the net session. See you later. Bye. By the time I was about 15, I was I was the club secretary, you know, so I've kind of been involved in wow. that. Yeah. Uh, 15? Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. nobody else want to Correct. do it? <laughs> that's, that's exactly it, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it wasn't an ambition or anything. It's just, yeah, it just, it just kind of happened. So.